The first train from Toronto arrived in Guelph on Saturday, June 14, 1856, filled with a party of various dignitaries and some members of the Legislative Council. A large crowd had gathered in Guelph, anticipating the arrival of the Governor-General, Sir Edmund Head, whom they believed was on the train to mark that auspicious occasion. Guelph was joyously decorated, and the town was ready to celebrate. Unfortunately, no one had informed the townspeople that the Governor-General was unable to come. The train riders had celebrated along the way with a lovely champagne luncheon and hatched a surprise for the welcoming crowd. The MPP for Lanark assumed the persona of the absent Governor-General, was cheered heartily by the crowd as he stepped off the train and made a speech from the balcony of nearby Horwood's Hotel, now the Royal Suites on Carden Street. When he was discovered to be a fraud, he was dragged from the balcony and the scene broke down in a general tumult of shouting, pushing, booing, and uproar, which ended only with the train returning to Toronto. Despite that chaotic beginning, railways brought prosperity and growth to Guelph, with crisscrossing tracks headed in all directions, delivering passengers and freight to stations and growing industries. The Guelph Junction Railway, the only municipally owned railway in Canada, was founded in 1888 to bring passengers and freight from the CPR line at the Guelph Junction near Campbellville, and is still a viable transportation system today. One of the central areas for railway traffic became known as the Junction near the intersection of Edinburgh Road and Inkerman Streets. This 1868 map shows that the Grand Trunk crossed the Galt and Guelph Railway while nearby ran the Wellington Gray and Bruce Railway. Near Edinburgh Road was a passenger station and a freight dock. For more than 100 years, the Junction area has played a significant role in Guelph's economic history. In the early 20th century, the Junction area generated great excitement among the children of Guelph. The circus trains arrived near the junction and proceeded to unload the circus animals on a spur line that ran to Exhibition Park. The children were given a school holiday to parade with horses and elephants and other exotic animals down the track to the circus tent at Exhibition Park. The largest industry in the junction was night lumber, founded in 1905. By 1925, it was a flourishing wholesale business, shipping lumber to the United States and England. Later, the company expanded with mills, dry storage, kilns, and a fleet of trucks. In the 1950s and 1960s, it was at its peak success when it shipped lumber as far away as Australia. After that time, it gradually declined and closed in 2011. Over the years since the first train arrived in Guelph, freight was a key driver of railway success. As you can see from the 1868 map, a large freight depot always stood near Edinburgh Road. In 1966, the old wooden CN freight sheds had been partly burned and were demolished. The new brick sheds were constructed on the same site. The present junction area housed the CN freight and express depot along a spur line. Built in the 1950s, it closed in 1975 as it was not big enough and did not have the configuration needed for the transfer operations of truck and highway trailer traffic required for efficient freight handling. At its peak, the depot had 34 employees. The last train from Toronto to Guelph ended its run there on November 14, 1975, after disembarking passengers at the Via station. Granite Homes acquired the whole former freight site, stretching from Alma Street to Edinburgh Road. The junction now has new life as a mixed-use business centre, with a thriving combination of railway heritage and unique architecture. This community features the Granite Home Design Studio, the head office, along with a collection of serviced offices and local businesses. The buildings feature the work of Montreal artist Pascal Normand, whose work presents an urban industrial view of cities that draws on collective wisdom. The old CN Freight Building has been thoughtfully renovated into Granite Homes Head Office. It is an excellent example of adapted reuse of a heritage building. It also features an award-winning design studio with a wide selection of options for their home buyers. 
It is a 2,500 square foot area where buyers can customize their home with the help of an interior design consultant. The platform is a new building that reflects the old depot and features beautiful co-working offices with shared boardrooms, lounge, and break room. The industrial and railway decor elements created by granite home designer Sarah Jackson contribute to a contemporary vibe. In the entrance is a massive light fixture, a one-of-a-kind creation that features an antique block and tackle pulley system from the 1930s combined to resemble a jib crane. Made to order metal sliding doors separating the coffee bar from the lounge were inspired by a train boxcar, painted to appear vintage, including simple graffiti and tags created by Toronto graffiti artist Jason Rouleau. The area between Granite Homes Building, which was the old freight shed, and the back of the property facing Alma Street will eventually be the site of a second building, providing additional creative office spaces. Completing the property facing Alma Street is Fixed Gear Brewing. The old junction area was an essential part of Guelph's growth and prosperity over more than 100 years. By giving new life to the old freight building and lands around it, Granite Homes has given a new life to this part of Guelph.